Hi there. For this video, I'll be going through the stages of um, pewter casting into a laser cut mold. Okay, so this is specific for this type of project and we've cut off a piece of pewter here already. Okay, off my stick of pewter. And just a quick note on that, I've used a hacksaw for that with a 18 TPI blade. Okay, it's got quite large teeth compared to a lot of the saws we have in the room. So you wanna be looking for one with a really big teeth on it or asking for that specific blade. Okay, now while we're doing this so that I don't end up waiting around for too long, I'm actually gonna go and put this in our setup um, of our uh, frying pan at this point in time. So we can come over here and have a quick look at this. You'll get everything else ready first though. Okay, so this is our setup. What we've got here is we've got our little gas burner um, on underneath our frying pan, which is sitting on a tripod for stability. Our little frying pan has got a little handle on it because it's a cast iron pan, it's got a cast handle, so that's just a little bit extra heat protection there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this just sitting in there for now, and that's going to slightly, slightly go into a little bit of a blob of metal. Alrighty, back over to our bench. What we're trying to achieve here, what we're going to get out of this is another one of these. This is what the design's going to produce from an earlier test. Okay, so we're going to create another one using the exact same mould we had before. Alright, so I've got my pieces of laser cut mould here. I've got some bits of dowel that are going to hold them together. I've got clamp here and some extra pieces of wood. They're going to help just move our clamps a little bit further away from our um, pewter that's being poured. I've also got some baby powder in the background there that's going to be used to help um, prepare our mould so that the metal doesn't stick quite as much. All right, so how our mould goes together, you'll have an extra little sprue engraving at the bottom there. This was our first, um, first test, so this one will go on top of that one there, and then this one here will flip over and go there. Now, most likely it's going to be completely um, blank there anyway. This has just got this here from the heat of the metal last time. So it probably wouldn't matter too much if it goes there, provided all your holes are still in the exact same place. But if they've moved, you'll need to flip them over like that. We're going to put these two pieces together first, and we'll put our piece of dowel through that. For now, and get that reasonably tight together. We're then going to take our baby powder I've got a small amount of it in the bottom of the cup there, and I'm gonna get that on the brush and just brush that into the mold. So this is supposed to make it less likely to stick to my wood. And I'm gonna tap that out any little extra bit. Oh, I'm gonna do the same on this here, just give it a light little brushing. It's probably not gonna to stick to this quite the same way. Just that little bit of a coating there over that. Once I've got that, a little bit of powder in those, I can put that together and just make sure that those bits of dowel go all the way through on both of them. Okay, just gonna move that back out of the way. From that point, I'm then going to put my blocks of wood on and clamp them into place. Now I've got two different types of clamps here. Both of them are fine to use. You just want one that's nice and small and isn't gonna have too much weight hanging around it, okay? And I want to have that clamp sitting to the side so that where the metal's going to get poured in is out of the way. Okay? And that should now be nice and secure sitting there. Alrighty, so that's pretty much ready to go. We're going to go set this up in our bricks now. So I'm going to bring you over to the bench where our bricks are. Have a bit of a look at this. So we, what we've got here is we've got this bit of angled um, steel, and that's just going to catch. If my mould's not done very well, and the um, pewter's going to run at the bottom, it's just going to catch it on that rather than falling through the holes in the bricks below. And those two bricks on top of that are going to actually just hold it vertical for me. Okay, so you can see how that's kind of slotted in there. Okay, and then I can just move the bricks forwards or backwards. Sorry about 
camera moving away um, until that's just sitting and holding it nice in place. Okay. All right, so that is going to be what we're going to pour that in. So let's go and have a look and see what our pewter's doing. Okay, so our pewter's starting to move around a little bit and starting to melt. Which is good. Oh, look at that, it's just about to puddle completely. You should probably note at this point in time the safety equipment you should be wearing. You should be having on your safety glasses. If you can't wear safety glasses, because we're dealing with molten metal, a face shield is appropriate. Okay, so if you can't wear the safety glasses because you have your own glasses on, then either clear goggles, completely sealed goggles that go over the top, or a face shield with your glasses underneath. A leather apron, and we'll also be having leather gloves on with the pouring. Okay, to protect you from the heat of the frying pan. Okay, so that is looking like a nice little blob now. And if I move that around, it runs around with the frying pan. Now we will get a little bit of metal that comes off this that is, basically it's this dirt or dirty metal, and that will hopefully not flow into our design. All right, I'm gonna get this set up over where my mold is so that we can see it being poured in. Some metal and that bit of dirt in there and I'm just going to really carefully line that up and very slowly try and control that really slowly going into my mold Now I can stop if either I run out of metal or I can see it sitting in the top of my mold put that frying pan there and turn my gas off make sure you turn that gas off completely so we don't run out of gas okay alrighty so oh, you can see the steam coming off that still So you can have a bit of a look inside there and you can see the metal just sitting in the top there. Hopefully that's traveled really nicely down into our mold, but we won't know for a few minutes. Okay, I can't take that out just yet because it's still a little bit warm. Okay, when we are ready to take it out, we can undo that, we can take it out of here. And I can actually do this now because it's cold enough that it's not going to affect the design. Okay, I can take those blocks away. Just make sure that I don't actually touch my metal. Okay. For the sake of this, I'm gonna go and pull my dowels out. I would like you to wait a little bit longer than I am. Okay. There we go, look at that. It's our beautiful design. Looks like it's worked really, really well. I should be able to move that away. The baby powder's done a good job and it's nice and neat, no holes in the end of it as well. So we've gotten the metal at a good time. We really don't want to leave the metal just sitting in the frying pan for extended periods of time because it can actually overheat. So it looks like we've got it at just the right time. Now that bit of metal is gonna still be nice and warm. So I'm just gonna leave it sitting in that mold until it cools down. And then I can take it out of that, pop it out of that and cut the top off. Excellent. Alrighty, so that's it. Make sure you still are wearing your safety equipment when you're doing this. And if you have any questions at all, or you're not sure of your setup, to come and talk to your teacher about it. Uh, and the teacher will be set checking your setup of the frying pan, etc. Anyway, don't forget as well to make sure that you have plenty of space around where you're working when you start to move that molten metal with the frying pan. Alrighty, thank you very much. Bye.